Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are tonight's entertainment. For the next 30 minutes, you will travel back to a time when radio controlled the transmission and the mind created all your fears. Welcome to Classic Dark Radio. Roma Wines present Suspense. Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Salud. Your health, senor. Roma Wines toast the world. The wine for your table is Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the Man in Black, here for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California, to introduce this weekly half hour of Suspense. Tonight in Hollywood, Roma Wines bring you the distinguished actor who has just won the New York Film Critics Award for his performance in Watch on the Rhine, Mr. Paul Lucas. The suspense play which stars Mr. Lucas and which is produced and directed by William Spear is called A World of Darkness. And so with the performance of Paul Lucas as the musician named Anton Rijak, to whom the world was a world of darkness, we again hope to keep you in suspense. All patrol cars in J area, J for Johnson. All patrol cars in J area go to 325 West 52nd. 325 West 52, a theatrical rooming house, homicide. This is homicide. A young woman stabbed. That is all. Okay, okay, okay. Is everybody here now? Yes, I think I've got all of them. Uh, there's Mrs. Collins, Mr. Farrell, Miss Walker, Mr. Gunther. Yes, they're all here, Lieutenant. Uh... You're the landlady, Mrs. Washburn, right? Well, if you want to put, be blunt about it. I'm afraid I'm a blunt man. Maybe it's a business I'm in. Last night, a girl was killed in this house. According to the coroner, it happened about two in the morning. She was killed in a particularly cold-blooded manner. Stabbed. And that's murder. There's no two ways about it. Now, you're intelligent people. You're all connected with the theater. No, I... not all, not all. France is my sort of uh, caretaker, handyman. Yes, handyman. But not to do with that theater, that place of sin and abomination. Don't mind him. France has always been a little prejudiced. I know when the sword of righteousness is ready to strike. Where were you at two o'clock in the morning? I was in my room waiting. What were you waiting for? Now, look, don't you people realize what you're up against? Till you can account for your actions last night, you're all under suspicion of murder. What makes you so sure one of us did it? Oh, you were Miss Nancy Collins' fiance, is that right, Mr. Farrell? Yes. What were you doing last night? I was out walking. Anybody see you? I don't know. I, I don't think so. How do I know? What were you doing out walking around at 2 o'clock in the morning? Well, after what happened, I... Oh? Uh-huh. What happened? Oh, nothing, nothing. I was upset, that's all. Why don't you tell him the truth, Daniel? The truth? What's the use of all this talking? It's not going to bring her back. What did you mean by that, Mrs. Collins? What truth? It's not my place to say. Daniel considers it a personal matter. It couldn't have had anything to do with what... Oh, I'm sure no one is concealing anything of the slightest importance. Everyone loved Nancy. Everyone. Please. Please. I know what you're getting around to. Why, Kay... That everyone loved her but me. That I hated her. But I didn't. Well, not enough to... To do a thing like that. Where were you at two this morning, Miss Walker? In my room. Can you prove that? No, of course I can't. That's the whole thing. Don't you see? No, listen, listen. Who's playing that piano? That's Mr. Rejack in the room across the hall. He's a musician. Does he live here? Yes. Why didn't you tell me? I thought you said everybody was here. No use talking to him. He doesn't even know about it. Will you please let me handle this? Really, Lieutenant, he couldn't tell you anything. You see, You get him in here, Haggerty. Go get him. Okay. Now, listen. You, you, You people have got an awful lot of explaining to do. None of you can prove where you were or what you were doing or why you were doing it. What about you, Mrs. Collins? You don't think... After all, I am poor Nancy's mother. Mrs. Collins, I'm just trying to get at the facts. You have the room next to Nancy's. Didn't you even hear anything? No. 
I've had insomnia for years. I have to take a strong sedative every night. Here comes Mr. Rejack. Oh, Mr. Rejack, I... I'm sorry to disturb you, sir. I didn't realize that... Uh, that I was blind? Oh, it is no matter. I was waiting for you to send for me, officer. You... You knew the police were here? But of course. Oh, uh, Mrs. Washburn, has anyone seen anything of Carl yet this morning? No, not yet. Uh, uh, who is Carl, Mr. A.J.? My Belgian police dog, who guides me. He has wandered off somewhere. <laughs> Although I cannot say I blame him. It is not much fun being a companion only to a blind man. Oh, well, he, he'll come back. That kind always does. Oh, I'm not worried. But now you wish to speak of the terrible thing that has happened to poor Nancy. Oh, you... You know about that? Unfortunately, yes. By the way, here is the key to her room. It was locked and you were obliged to force it, were you not? Why, yes, but how, how did you... How do I have the key? And how do I know? You see, I'm a blind man. But there are many ways for a blind man to know many, many things. Yes, I, I see. Poor Nancy. Poor child. How much do you know about that? Quite a bit, I'm afraid. I know how she was killed. I know why she was killed. And I know who killed her. Tonight in our suspense theater, murder was unseen in the dark. But the crime was witnessed by a single human being with the eyes of night. Roma Wines is bringing you Paul Lucas as star of suspense in the Robert L. Richards story, A World of Darkness. You have heard the prologue for tonight's tale of suspense. Before we return to the scene of our drama, let me take a moment to offer a practical reminder. Sudden calls on your hospitality suggest the advantages of having several Roma Wines always on hand. For smart and gracious entertaining, nothing can take the place of a glass of Roma wine, whether as an enjoyable beverage by itself or on the table with meals. And look how economical entertainment centered around good wine can be. Only a few cents a glass when you choose the largest selling wines of America, Roma Wines. Location of Roma wineries in favorite wine districts of California and Roma's vast experience and skill as winemakers Explain why wine connoisseurs of other lands hail Roma wines and keenly enjoy them. So you know you are complimenting your guests' good taste when you serve Roma wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now it is with pleasure that Roma wines bring back to our soundstage Mr. Paul Lucas in A World of Darkness, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. You think it is a great affliction to be bind. Yes, in a way it is. If he yields to it, it can make a man bitter and distort his mind. But if he struggles against it, there are merciful compensations. In time, he reaches out into the world again and finds he can perceive the meaning of the life around him without his eyes. A world of darkness becomes to him a place of utmost sensitivity to other things, to touch, to, to smell, but above all, to sound. The ticking of a watch, the, the, the rustle of clothing, the sound of breathing, or even the beat of a heart. I have only to focus my attention on a sound so distant or so slight as to be utterly imperceptible to anyone else. And to me, it is magnified and amplified a hundred times. Last night, though sitting in my room and confined in my eternal darkness, I heard what I could not see. And I was witness to a murder. The bells of Trinity had just run the three-quarter hour. They are at the lower extremity of the city, but I always like to listen for them. It was a quarter to midnight. I was about to go back to my piano. I had been working on a little composition of my own. 
when I heard Nancy coming down the street from the direction of the theater. She was walking very fast. It was clear to me that she was disturbed about something, so I knew she would want to see me. I waited for her knock. Yes, Nancy, come in. Oh, you are troubled. What is it? How did you know? You know I can always tell these things. <laughs> See, even Carl knows. Oh, hello, Carl. He's so nice. You're both so nice. Carl and I. Huh? <laughs> you know he loves you, Nancy. I think he really does. Almost as much as he loves me. I know. Oh, I'm going to miss you both terribly. You are going away? Anton, I'm going to marry Danny Farrell. To marry? Yes, he's quitting the stage and he's going into the army. I'm going with him. That's what I want to tell you about. I see. Anton, you've always been so good to me. You've helped me so much and I... I've always felt that you liked me. More than that, Nancy. I'm very, very fond of you. Oh, Anton... You're the best friend I've ever had. But I'm nearly twice your age and blind. Oh, that doesn't matter. We've had some wonderful times together. Yes. And now you wish to talk to me because you are still not sure you have made the right decision, hmm? Yes. Now, to leave the stage now, just when you are having the first time, such a wonderful success. Oh, it isn't that. I, I've always hated the stage. Hated it. Now, Nancy, now... You have a very great talent. You, you can't have a talent for anything you don't like. And you can't like anything you've had crammed down your throat ever since you were barely able to talk. Oh, it's your mother. She's counted on it all these years. She sacrificed everything for my career. Oh, mother loves me in her way, but sometimes she's so strange. When I told her about Danny tonight, I, I thought she was going to have a stroke or something. I've seen her angry before, but... Never like no, this. Oh, it will pass. Anton, for a minute she... She looked insane. I was frightened. Really frightened. Listen. What? Anton, what is it? Your mother is leaving her room. She will be coming down here to look for you. How do you know? The rustle of her satin, satin robe. I hear it often. Perhaps you better not speak any more just now of your little trouble. Oh, I shouldn't have bothered you. I know it must seem childish and no, silly no, to no, you. No, 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 Nancy. It is not for me. But perhaps your mother will not like it that you confide in others. But how could you know that she... Nancy. She's... You see? She is coming. Nancy. Yes, Mother. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I thought you might be here. Good evening, Edna. Nancy, you really must come upstairs now. If I'm going to have your new dress ready for the equity party, I've got to cut it from the pattern tonight, and I want you to help me. Mother, I'm not going to the party. Why, Nancy, of course you are. It's very important. Mother, do we have to go through it all again? Nancy, dear, I'm sorry I lost my temper this evening. I know this seems like the only thing in the world that matters just now, love and all but you simply can't walk out of the lead in a hit play and ever expect to be successful. I don't want to be successful. Can't you get that through your head? After I've slaved and skimped and planned all these years. You'll be all right, Mother. There'll be enough. I'll be all right. I'm not thinking of myself. I've never had a chance to think of myself. Only last week I drew every penny of my own savings and took it out an insurance policy on you. A hundred thousand dollars. So that you'd have something for your old age. You shouldn't have done that, Mother. And now you want to throw away everything I've done for that harebrained boy. But, Edna, if Nancy is in love... You keep out of this. Mother, please. Oh, I've watched you too, Anton Rejack. But I knew she wouldn't have anything to do with a blind man. Mother! You couldn't see her. But you could touch her, couldn't you? You could be in love with her. <laughs> well, I hope you see now what a fool you've made of yourself. You fool. You blind fool. Fool, fool, fool! Down, Carl. Quiet. He struck me. I'm sorry. You deserved it, Mother. 
I think you'd better go and hide. Nancy, I want you to come upstairs right away. We're going to cut out your new dress tonight. Oh, Anton, forgive me. No, it is nothing. I'm sorry I did what I did, but I was afraid she would become hysterical. Anton, I didn't know. Believe me, I didn't know. No, it is nothing. You had better go up to her now. Yes. Oh, I'm afraid. Oh, but there is nothing to be afraid of. Yes. But I'm afraid. I could not sleep, although it was late. I tried to go back to my work, but my attention wandered. I could not keep from mind from what was going on in that room upstairs. I heard each sound as clearly as though the cause of it were there at my very side. Nancy was weeping. And against the sound of her tears, like an inexorable counterpoint, the scissors, deliberate mechanical snipping and crunching of heavy dressmaker's shears, cutting material on a table. Then there was an interruption. Footsteps going up the stairs. The footsteps of Danny Farrell. I knew what would happen then. Mrs. Collins, you've got to listen. So I did not want to listen. Out of here. Nancy, but for a moment I did. Danny, I don't know what to do. Well, it's about time you found out, isn't it? I shut my mind to it. I didn't want to hear anymore. There was to be another quarrel, another agonizing scene. And then presently I heard the steps again. Slow and heavy this time, coming down the stairs. They went towards the front door instead of to his own room. He was going out. I did not know what he might do. I went to my own door, and as casually as I could, I opened it. Oh, hello, Anton. Why, hello, Danny. Were you going out? For a little walk. It's late. I guess it is. I am sorry, Danny. You know about it, do you? Yes, Nancy told me tonight. There was a scene with her mother again. It will come out all right. Oh, no, it won't. Why? Nancy's changed her mind. Or rather, her mother's changed it for her. The poor child. Anton, Nancy's a lovely girl. She's the loveliest girl in the world. But she's weak. But we are all weak in one way or another. But she doesn't know what she does to people. She doesn't know the torture she puts people through. No. And I can't stand it any longer. If I can't have Nancy, I'll... I'll do something. Danny, now, it will be all right. It can't be all right. How do I know it won't go on like this after we're married? Oh, I'm crazy, I suppose, but I... I know how these things are. Two young people in love cannot be kept apart by anyone or anything in this earth. No, Anton. I thought it over and over every way there is. It won't work. Oh, come in. Anton, I... Oh, I didn't know you were here, Danny. Okay. I just heard the news over at the theater... Congratulations. Thanks. I suppose I had to say that. You know I don't mean it, Danny. Please, Kay, I... I don't think you love her, Danny. I don't see how you could. Kay, I don't want to talk about it tonight. Are you afraid to talk to me, Danny? Are you? I'm sorry, Kay. Good night, Anton. Danny. Danny, listen to me. Danny! Oh, let him go. He's upset tonight. He's upset. He's upset. (laughs) Kay, Kay, stop it. Get hold of yourself. (laughs) I love him. I love him. I can't let him go. Oh, but you must, don't you see? He's going to be married. Before she came along, he couldn't even think of anyone but me. She planned it very nicely. Just the way she's planned everything else. She doesn't care how many lives she wrecks, including his. But it won't be so easy this Kay, time. Kay, Kay, you are talking foolishness. Listen, Anton. Before I'd let her get away with this, I'd kill her. So help me, I'd kill her. <laughs> She left me at last. I paid no heed to where she went. I was disturbed and troubled. I sat in the darkness of my mind, thinking. Then I heard steps again. Those odd, dragging steps coming towards my door. Franz? Yes, Mr. Reject. Did you want to see me, Franz? No. No, I was only listening. Listening? To what? Don't you hear it? The beating of the wings? They've been close about the house all evening. Oh, oh, have they? 
The time is very near. Are you a good man, Mr. Reed, Jack? Now, I don't know, friends. I, I try to be. The black angel with the bright sword of righteousness and vengeance. Do you think we can escape him? Well, I, I hope so. No, no. Don't you know what goes on in this house? Haven't you seen them? With their painted lips, their tinkling rings and bracelets, and their vanity and their scoffing? Yes, yes, friends. Uh, uh, what have you in your bag there? Oh, yes, my, my tools. Always I work. Work day and night. There's a dripping faucet up in Miss Collins' room. I have to fix it. Dripping faucet? Oh, yes. What's the matter, Mr. Redek? Did you think of something? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I was thinking that I must take Carl out for a walk. <laughs> oh, 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 no, Carl, down, down, Hello down. Hello there, Carl. He's a fine dog, eh? Franz. Yes, yes. Go along. Do what I told you. It's late. Yes, yes. I do what I'm told. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans. For this city will I humble to the dust, and this house will I make a place of weeping and desolation. <laughs> The moment the old man called my attention to the faucet, I had heard it. When I back, went back into my room, I, I still heard it. I heard the old man tinkering with the pipes. Then the dripping grew less and stopped. Then the shears began again. Those long, sharp scissors cutting the dress. I forced myself to return to my work, and for a while I heard nothing more. Then I heard it. The dripping had begun again. But this time it was no longer water that was dripping. It was then that I knew. I sat frozen with horror. It was the most terrible sound I had ever heard in my life. At last, I got up and took my cane and went to the door. Carl wished to go with me, but I closed the door on him. It was later, somehow in my confusion, that he slipped away. I started up the stairs. That terrible sound grew louder. It came from Nancy's room. I had just reached the top of the stairs. There was no way for anyone to leave Nancy's room except in my direction. It was then that I heard the telltale whisper. The murderer had passed me in the darkness. I went to Nancy's door. There was no need to go in. I knew what was there as surely as though I had seen it happen with the eyes I no longer have. For I could hear the steady dripping of her blood. closed the door and locked it. I put the key in my pocket. I wished to make certain that the criminal would have no chance to return and cover up any evidence of the crime. Then I returned to my room to wait for you officers of the police to come. And now you would know as I knew why Nancy Collins died and who killed her. <laughs> Do all you people here confirm what Mr. Rejack says about your movements last night? Wait. What did you mean about the telltale whisper? Oh, what is the use of any longer pretending, Edna? You killed her. Now you must pay for it. No, no! Now, doubtless you have already found her fingerprints on the scissors with which Nancy has stabbed. Oh, naturally, they were Mrs. Collins' scissors anyway. And I have a suspicion that you will find the insurance policy she took out on her daughter's life only last week that makes Edna Collins the beneficiary in the event of Nancy's death. No, no, I didn't do it. You better take her along, Haggerty. All right, come on. No, please, wait come a minute. On. Maybe I've been selfish, but I loved her. He's lying because he hates me for what I said. No, no, please! Well, Mr. Rejack, I guess several people owe you their thanks for this. And you owe me nothing. If it could only bring her back to life. Come in. Jack's dog, ma'am, down in the cellar. Been there all night. Here, Carl. 
Carl, my poor old Carl. Here, Carl. Carl, what's the matter now? Where are you? Grab him, somebody. Grab him. Pull him back. Back, you. Carl. Kill him. Carl, what's the matter? Don't you know me? Uh, Mr. Rejack, you, you say you shot your dog in your room before you went upstairs last night. Yes. Yes. You're certain? Well, but of course. And you say you did not go into Nancy Collins' room after you discovered the murder? No. No, I did not. Well, that's very strange, Mr. Rejack. Because your dog did. His coat is matted with her blood. I realize now that the dog must have followed me. I heard him whimper when I struck... Then somehow he disappeared. But before I locked the room, the beast must have fawned on her where she fell. Yes, I... I killed her. It is no matter now. She will marry no one now. Nor will I. Yet it is true I heard those things. Yes, most of them. You would be amazed what I can hear. Now, even from where I sit, I can hear the men at work at the place where they will take me. Although that place is many miles away. They are hammering on the scaffolding in preparation for me. And now they are clambering up upon the platform. And now they are about to test that ingenious device that will snuff out my life. Listen. They spring the trap. So closes A World of Darkness, presented by Roma Wines and starring Paul Lucas. Tonight's tale of Suspense. In just a moment, we'll hear again from Mr. Lucas. First, though, let's visit one of the great airports in our country. The afternoon clipper has just landed in the USA. A North American and his newly arrived visitor from south of the border are about to take a table at an airport cafe. Well, Elliot, I promised to return to your visit, and here I am. I'll try to make things as pleasant for you here as you made them for me in your beautiful home in Las Palmas. How about some wine before dinner, Carlos? Oh, thank you. Some sherry, perhaps? Certainly. Wait a minute. Oh, Elliot, can we get here that wonderful Roma wine we had the day you left my country? Well, of course, Carlos. Here we can have Roma wine anytime. To wine connoisseurs abroad, Roma wines are a rare treat because shipping now is difficult and duty is high. But here at home, you can enjoy these great wines as often as you like. For Roma wines of all types are made in our own California. Highly prized and high-priced elsewhere, Roma wines here cost little enough to be served even at everyday family meals. And what a difference they make in meal enjoyment. Why don't you surprise your family tomorrow with delicious Roma California sherry? You never tasted finer. You don't need a special menu or special glasses either. Just chill the wine beforehand, and when your folks come home, pour them a delightful glass of Roma. Almost all wine dealers have complete assortments of Roma wines. They're America's largest selling wines. Ask for Roma, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. But before you buy wine, buy war bonds and stamps. This is Paul Lucas again, ladies and gentlemen. Germany murders her cripples. We protect ours, help them back to normal lives. And we fight the major cause of crippling, infantile paralysis. Every night from now till January 31st, sort out all the dimes you have. Then enlist them in the March of Dimes. Send your contribution to President Roosevelt at the White House. It's the American way. Thank you, Mr. Lucas. Next Thursday, same time, your stars will be Virginia Bruce and Alan Jocelyn in Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you for joining us. 
I hope you enjoyed tonight's entertainment. Now, I caution you to subscribe before it's too late, before this broadcast ends, before we 